Good evening, and welcome back to the Poe Museum. Over the course of his career, Edgar Allan Poe wrote hundreds of things, from tales and poems to essays and book reviews, even a textbook on seashells. But a lot of the things that people think he wrote, he didn't. So we'll examine a few of these faux Poes on tonight's installment of The Curator's Crypt. <music> This is the Lady Hubbard, a poem published in Godey's Lay's book, a magazine to which Poe contributed things like the Cask of Amontillado. It appeared just two months after Poe's death in the December 1849 issue. And look, it's signed E.A. Poe. Let's read a little bit. Far down in the past where the army has gone, a maker of glassware dwelt nearly alone, and green is the grass there, for Hubbard is gone. It's not very good. And there's a reason for that. It's because Poe didn't write it. It's actually a parody of Poe's works written by his enemy, Thomas Dunn English. So it didn't take long for people to figure out that this was a faux Poe. But there's other things that had a little bit more traction. Now this is a pretty substantial collected edition. This is one of 16 volumes of Poe's complete works published in 1902. And right here is Poe's essay, Slavery in the United States. It's a book review of two books that are written about slavery. And in fact, the review appears in later editions of Poe's essays and reviews. The source of it is the April 1836 issue of the Southern Literary Messenger. It's right there. But the thing is, when you look at the review, it's not signed. And we actually have documentary evidence. We actually have a letter which says that Poe didn't write it. It's written by a fellow named Beverly Tucker. So Poe really had nothing to do with this article that's made it into various collections of his works. And this is because a lot of people around the turn of the century were trying to find previously unknown or overlooked Poe's works. So they started scouring various magazines and newspapers where he was known to have published other things. And practically anything that looked Poe-esque ended up making it into a book. And this fellow, James Whitty, who published this, has a whole section in the back devoted to his new Poe discoveries. See, additional poems with poetry attributed to Poe. Only problem is, he pretty much assigned anything he could find to Poe, as long as it seemed like Poe could have written it. And that's how English notes came to be attributed to Poe. This was published in late 1842, and it's a parody of American notes by Charles Dickens. Dickens had just visited the United States and met Edgar Allan Poe while he was here. But on his return, he wrote American notes, which wasn't especially complimentary of the country he just visited. So this appeared sort of as an attack on American notes. Now, nobody at the time thought that Edgar Allan Poe had actually written this. It was years and years after his death that Joseph Jackson decided, you know what, I bet you Poe wrote this, because Poe did write comedies and satires. He also wrote book reviews. And this is signed by a Quarles Quickens, and Poe used the pseudonym Quarles when he published The Raven, so it makes perfect sense. The only problem is there's actually no evidence to support it, and pretty much no Poe scholars have accepted this anymore as Poe's works. So that's one of the problems. It's kind of difficult to tell just on stylistic grounds what is or isn't Poe. Sometimes you just have to use better judgment. Let's take a look at a few of the Poe quotes that are floating around out there. How about this one? Sleep, those little slices of death. How I loathe them. Is that Poe or Poe? 
it's actually not Poe. The first recorded instance of it is actually the introduction of the movie A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, where it appears on the screen at the beginning of the film. So that's not a Poe. How about, this one's often been attributed to Poe, I wish I could write as mysterious as a cat. Well, first of all, the grammar's horrible. If he's describing the verb write, he should be using mysteriously. Would Poe have made that mistake? Of course not. Poe didn't write. Now, how about, sometimes I'm terrified of my heart, of its constant hunger for whatever it is at once, the way it stops and starts. Actually, Poe did write that one. Poe the singer, not Poe the poet. So different Poe. And next up there is, I do not suffer from insanity. I enjoy every minute of it. Nah, Poe didn't write that one either, but it makes a nice t-shirt. How about, I became insane with long intervals of horrible sanity. Yes, Poe wrote that one. That actually came from a January 4th, 1848 letter that Poe wrote to his friend George W. Eveleth. So we can document when and where Poe wrote that. And here's another good one that turns up in a lot of internet memes. Believe nothing you hear, and only one half that you see. Well, Poe did write that one. It appears in his short story, The System of Dr. Tar and Professor Feather. So how'd you do in our little quiz? Were you able to separate the Poe from the foe? Do you have any other horrible Poe quotes or faux Poe quotes? Why not just put them down in the comments? And if you'd like to help the Poe Museum separate fact from fiction and preserve precious Poe pieces like these, why not become a patron at patreon.com slash Poe Museum. And until next time, thanks for joining us, and I'll leave you with more gratuitous footage of the Poe Museum cats. Mm -hmm.